Migrant workers lose another round in their court fight over COVID testing. Feeling the drain pain, a Southeast Michigan farmer gets creative to solve his problem. And MSU continues their virtual field days. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. A Michigan appeals court ruled against farm workers and farm owners in their case against the state and its mandate that certain farm workers be tested for COVID-19. The workers argued the emergency order requiring the test infringed on migrant workers' civil rights. In its nine-page filing, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals said considering the effects of government action on various racial groups is not evidence of improper purpose. It is often said that necessity is the mother of invention. When Riga, Michigan farmer Brian Gates' 110-acre field needed a drainage outlet, he got creative. Because of the inherent soil properties in this particular southeast Michigan field, subsurface drainage was required. But without a drainage outlet, Gates needed to go a step further and develop a system for tile drains to send water to a pond where it could be stored until it's irrigated back out onto the field. I bought the farm, intended on tiling it. I couldn't really get a drainage outlet. I called Tom Van Wagner, uh, had an idea about retaining the water and storing it, uh, bounced it off of him about three years ago, we talked about it. It just kind of materialized from there. One period of time, Lake Erie was out here. So these are lake bed soils and means when the glacier melted, you know, caused a bunch of erosion in the hills. And then when it settled out, all the silts and the, and the clays settled last. And so therefore, Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, and a lot of areas, we have some alluvial, alluvial areas, but a lot of this lake bed is just heavy textured soils. In fact, so you need to do subsurface drainage because the inherent soil properties are so heavy, it can't get rid of the excess water. I think this is a really great project because it not only utilizes subsurface drainage as an agronomic practice, but also addresses the environmental issues and, and water quantity related issues as well by, by capturing and reusing the drainage water. So it's more of a closed loop system to where we'll drain water when it's necessary and that drained water will be pumped into a five acre reservoir that's roughly 16 feet deep and then that water will be stored there until such time as there's a deficiency or a drought situation where they can then distribute that water back out and, and actually sub-irrigate this crop by, by adding water back into the subsurface drainage system, reversing the drainage process and, and, and watering those crops from the bottom up. So it'll be a water quality and quantity related issue with the agronomic outcomes. For a long time we've known that there are nutrients that are put on the farm that leave the farm via waters, some surface, some subsurface. And what this basically does is address the subsurface nutrient loss from the field and uh, in this case, hopefully we'll com completely eliminate that migration of the nutrients and keep it on farm where it has the uh, maximum benefit. Installation will be completed this fall and the system will be fully operational for the 2021 growing season. Up next, learn what's on tap for MSU's virtual field days. There's torque. Then there's 1,050 pound feet of available best in class torque. There's towing, then there's up to 37,000 pounds of available best-in-class towing. There's backing up a trailer, then there's backing up with available class-exclusive Pro Trailer Backup Assist. In other words, there are trucks, and then there's the new Ford Super Duty, the most capable heavy-duty pickup truck ever built. There are only seven Michigan State University virtual field days left on the fall calendar. Topics range from pollinator habitat establishment, corn management, vegetable and root crops, grazing, and precision livestock farming. We have a lot of really traditional field days that, that we've had in place for years that people are used to coming to and getting some of the most current information 
to impact their decisions during the growing season. So we thought if we can't do face-to-face -face, and many of our farmers wouldn't be comfortable with face-to-face, -face, what can we do? And so we posed that question to our educators and specialists and they've been very creative and innovative in, in ways that they've offered this information to our producers. The Corn Virtual Field Day on September 9th will focus on production issues, including tar spot disease, field unevenness, and integrated management. We've got two hours, we're going to cover tar spot in that first hour, and in that second hour we're going to have other MSU um, specialists um, on to talk about other issues, particularly um, um, some of the unevenness in corn that we had this year. And I know Manny Singh is going to talk about hybrid selection and maturity and whatnot. I think one of the biggest challenges to these virtual field days is that interaction component. And I'd really encourage people, if you're sitting in, in one of those webinars, maybe you, know, you might be more likely to, to um, interact because now you can just type in a chat box rather than you know, putting your hand up in amongst 100 people, right? So have those questions come in because that's, that's what really drives, I think, the conversations and the answers that Michigan farmers need. RUP and CCA credits will be available for those participating in the live event. Visit the Virtual Field Days website to view archived videos or to register for upcoming events. Just Google MSU Virtual Field Days. It takes you to the website and there's a registration link there and they can register for the ones that they'd like to participate in. That's an important part because that gives them the link to be able to actually join that field day. Up next, John James visits Westview Orchards. It was fun. It's always great to get outside in a, a time of uncertainty and social distancing, connecting uh, with the ground and people. Planning for 2019 and beyond? Foster Swift's Ag Law team offers comprehensive legal counsel for farmers and businesses. U.S. Senate candidate John James has spent the last several weeks touring farms across the state, including a recent stop at Macomb County's Westview Orchards, where he's meeting with farmers to discuss issues important to them. The Republican, who has received AgriPAC's endorsement, says he's learned a lot along the way. The core theme that I learn is the investment, not financial per se, uh, but the emotional investment their farmers have uh, in their land. Uh, the very first conservationists that we have are farmers. Understanding uh, sustainability before it became a buzzword, recognizing that our farmers are, are the stewards of the land uh, that, that they're entrusted with, and most of whom are family business owners that got this land from their parents and grandparents and want to do their best to pass this land on to future generations. And uh, the common theme that I hear from farmers is we want to do the right thing, but it feels like uh, overburdensome regulations uh, made by people who don't necessarily get business or farming um, uh, is, is really hurting. So making sure that from a regulatory standpoint, from a legislative standpoint, we have a friend of agriculture in Washington and also someone who understands business um, can start creating the story where families can keep their farms, they can keep their dream, and we can all have a healthy, more sustainable future. The Michigan milk producers have named Brent and Emily Simon of Westphalia as the organization's outstanding young dairy cooperators. In this role, the couple will represent MMPA at various industry and association activities. The Simons operate a 2,300-acre farm with 930 cows and are members of the MMPA Mid-Michigan Local in District 6. Drew and Beth Ruprick of Vassar were selected as the runner-up young cooperators. And now with the latest on markets for Michigan Ag Commodities, here's Chris Betts. Thanks, Janelle. Continued Chinese interest in U.S. corn and beans lends support this week. Both have also benefited from reduced crop conditions. Funds are building on their net long position in soybeans. This group remains short corn, but has taken back most of that position since June. Position jockeying will be the name of the game heading into next Friday's WASDE report, which will be the first to reflect storm damage from early August. Export estimates will also be watched closely, especially given the record high levels of new crop business that has already been booked. For more market information, go to mishag.com. With Michigan Agricultural Commodities, I'm Chris Betts. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com or the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Gross. Have a great week of farming.